Titan is uh, different from the others, and I'll, uh, this, these are the distinct uh, things about it. It's the largest capacity DSV in the world. And what does that mean? Those, all, those other subs, those are two and three person subs. This sub uh, holds five people. Uh, the it has the largest viewport in the world uh, for that depth. It's, uh, uh, you'll get us, I have a picture of that later on. It's, it's about, mm, I don't have a real measurement for it. It's about, mm, it's big enough for two people to look out the window at the same time. Okay. Uh, the, uh, there is no hatch on this sub. And uh, when you get in and out of a normal DSV, it's, uh, it's through a very tight hole to get into the pressure vessel. Uh, uh, Stockton, our founder, didn't like that. He wanted something that was more convenient for our mission specialists. And so that front dome, it swings open. There's a hinge on the other side and, and it completely swings open so that you can get into the sub uh, without having to squeeze through uh, a tight hole. And it's, uh, it's very convenient because uh, when it came to assembling the inside of the sub, all the electronics, getting in and out is a back, being able to bring things in and out of the sub, being able to assemble major sections of the, uh, of the insides and be able to just slide it in and insert it into the sub made assembly super easy. It would have been so much more difficult if we had to bring in uh, each individual part through a, a tiny hatch and then assemble it inside. So really it facilitates not only in, uh, entry and exit of the passengers, but also of the, uh, all the items uh, that go into the construction of it. Um, we have a toilet. One of the main things that people <laughs> are worried about when they get on the sub yeah. and we tell them, oh yeah, each dive is about 10 to 12 hours. And the toilet is uh, basically, it's a, it doubles as a front seat and I have a picture of it. And, uh, uh, and uh, now people will think, oh, well, it's not as private, but it's like there's a there's a privacy screen. So people will be able to hear and smell, but, uh, you know, it's tight quarters in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the way that the that the sub is steered is through a wireless game controller, just like an, uh, like an Xbox controller. It's actually like that. That's cool. So it's... Uh, no kidding. It, it's, it's nice because uh, the, you're able to pass around control to, from person to person. Uh, so per, somebody can be sitting in the front dome and can be driving around, or they can be sitting in the back uh, looking at the large screens. Um, it's, and we have no seats in there uh, per se. It's just an open floor, and you'll see a picture of that. And then there's large media screens on the inside so that people can see uh, what the cameras are seeing on the outside. Okay. And so this is what it looks like inside. No it's way. Uh, very, uh, I would, Spartan is not the right word. It's very uh, basic. Uh, there's not much in there because it's, everything is digital. Uh, it's kind of like a Tesla in that, you know, it's the, uh, there's two controller screens and a mm -hmm. media screen in the back. And you see there's a, a power button. You can see the power button right there. Yeah, there's a there's a, uh, there's a panel that flips out uh, that controls all the the, the circuit breakers. Okay. And uh, other than that, there's just a uh, a keyboard for each of those screens. Uh, one computer screen controls all the systems on the sub, and the other one controls all the uh, all the media, uh, like the uh, the cameras and the uh, the sonar. Okay. Uh, and uh, so uh, it can hold five people. Uh, very comfortably. In fact, one, th one thing that's nice about having open floors is that people can rearrange their seating location. You know, so two people can be sitting in the front looking at the dome. If somebody wants to lay down, there's enough room for somebody to lay down. Uh, it's it's pretty convenient. We do have these like little like stadium seats so that someone can be have something to sit back on. But uh, but it's, it's pretty convenient. This is my daughter. Uh, she's sitting on that toilet. It doubles as a front row seat. So you lift the lid off that and move the toilet. That's awesome. The convenience for the, sure. The viewport screen here in the upper right, it's uh, it's very thick glass. It's like about five inches thick or so. And, um, and it doesn't distort the outside. It's optically, it looks like a, just a, a flat window when you're sitting there underwater. But, uh, but wow. in actuality, it's concave on the inside and convex on the outside. 
And uh, now when we built the, the, well, I'll go into the testing later, but this is the, the pressure vessel all by itself. It's right here in the lower right. We, uh, we had it on the back of a truck and we sent it all the way to the East Coast to be tested. I'll go into details on that later. Okay. All the thrusters and the, the cabling and all the electronics. And uh, it, it, it was a, a bit of a process to build that. Oh, I can imagine. So the, the core, uh, the, the, the most basic part of the sub is this center hull that's uh, the, the, of the pressure vessel. And it's made of carbon fiber. It's 660 layers of carbon fiber tape. And it's five inches thick and 55 inches in diameter and 100 inches long. It's, uh, and what, what are the advantages of it? So it's carbon fiber. Not only is it strong, but it's lighter than uh, the comparable amount of titanium. It also weighs less. I mean, I mean it also uh, costs less. Um, so uh, when you... Uh, the, the weight of your pressure vessel is very important when it comes to a DSV because in order, you have to make your sub neutrally buoyant. Now, if you have something that's really heavy, you have to compensate for that by making by, by having foam uh, to, to make it lighter. So mm -hmm. if you have a, uh, a large pressure vessel with very thick steel and it's very, very heavy, uh, like if we were to make this out of titanium, we would have to have a, uh, an, uh, an inordinate amount of syntactic foam, which is the type of foam that we use. It's a special type of foam that is incompressible and can withstand the pressures at, at, at the deep depths and will not be uh, distorted. And, uh, and so you end up with a sub that would be super big mm -hmm. and unwieldy and not easy to, to maneuver. For our sub, for, for Titan, it was so light that we only needed just a little bit of syntactic foam in order to keep it, uh, uh, keep the trim so that it's level in the water. Otherwise, it would be, it would tilt forward or tilt, actually, it would tilt forward if we didn't put any foam on it. Right. But uh, uh, so we're able to, uh, to have a smaller size overall of the sub. So this sub is about the same size as those other DSVs, but it okay. holds uh, twice as many people. Um, uh, so anyway, this what's this contraption? This is the robotic arm that was used to lay down all those 660 layers of tape. Uh, this, uh, this is a company in, uh, in Mukilteo, Washington, near us that called Electro Impact. And basically, this is a robotic tape dispenser. That's a very uh, simplistic way to think of it. Uh, <laughs> right. It takes these little strips of carbon fiber tape and it lays it down in a very precise way so that it doesn't overlap from layer to layer uh, uh, as you as it goes around. And uh, it also heats it up as it's depositing it. So because you have to, uh, this thing at the very tip is a, is a, is a heater. And so it deposits that tape and uh, uh, in a very precise manner. And uh, we had to do it in, uh, it took, actually took months. It actually took a couple of months for this robot arm to build that hull. Uh, it was a very long process, but, uh, but we, we learned along the way. Uh, we did some test builds before we built the actual hull. And, uh, and so we knew how to avoid the issues that we are having earlier. And so this, this carbon fiber hull, one thing that we do, oh, I didn't mention, we monitor the safety of the hull uh, in two different ways. We use acoustic sensors and we use strain sensors. The acoustic okay. sensors listen uh, for ultrasonic um, pulses that can happen. Uh, the, the microscopic carbon fibers, um, when they're under pressure, this, the hull does flex. Even though it's uh, five inches thick, that carbon fiber moves very small amounts, a few millimeters, but that's enough for some of those fibers to break. Now, those fibers, if enough of those fibers break, then you're going to have a hull breach and people will die. So um, if we can listen in and hear those, those, those fibers breaking, we can know ahead of time if it's going to fail. And so we use that as a predictive uh, process. The good thing is that 
the first time we put we tested the hull, we put it into a hyperbaric chamber. Uh, we got we, we could hear those fibers breaking, uh, but then on all successive uh, dives, uh, successive tests, it was quiet. So we kind of like worked out all the kinks out of it. So it's kind of like a spring. So it under pressure, it compresses a little bit and then it relaxes, but there's no more fibers that break. So uh, we had we had uh, no issues at all with the with the hull. It was really nice. So we designed the the, the sub in uh, uh, in CAD before we built it in real life. And the nice advantage of this is that we had all the parts built and ready to go so that when we got that, that haul back from testing, we were able to assemble the sub in just about two months. Uh, and uh, with just, you know, we assembled it by hand, of course. And so that was really fast, both the insides and the outsides uh, we were able to assemble and uh, it was, worked out very well. The, uh, the external systems on the sub are, there's four thrusters, there's cameras and lights, we have buoyancy control. Uh, the way we do buoyancy controls, we have a ballast bag and we have a high pressure air tank. It's kind of like similar to scuba diving. Okay. And then we have uh, drop weights that control uh, buoyancy. So when, 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 the, when first diving, the sub is very heavy and it drops. And then when it reaches the bottom, we drop a few weights to keep, to make it neutrally buoyant. And then when we're done diving, we drop a few more weights to make it positively buoyant. So then it will go back up. So basically the, the fuel for a uh, part of the fuel that allows us to go up and down is a uh, steel pipe. Okay. So we, and then we have tracking systems. Uh, the sub doesn't, know where it's at when it's underwater. Um, GPS doesn't work. Uh, compasses do work, by the way. But um, okay. but we have a, a ship on the surface that has access to GPS. And the ship can use a sonar system to to monitor where the sub is. And so uh, and we know where the sub is uh, in relation to the ship. And so then we can guide the sub to where the wreck is. So we can say, hey, as, you, as they're dropping, hey, you need to go a little bit northeast or you need to go a little northwest. So we can kind of guide them as they go down. And I was very impressed uh, on every one of our dives, we ended up right on the wreck. It was very good, very expert systems. And then there's communications. There's a VHF radio from when we're on the surface. And, and the communication, we, uh, we send and receive uh, communication when we're uh, texting. It's like a sonar modem. And so it's not voice uh, communication. Uh, it's all just typing. All right, so go down, here we go. So this is what it looked like naked without any covers on it. Well, at least most of the covers. Right. Jeez. So you can see the batteries and the motor controllers and all the cabling. Uh, uh, I like this picture because this shows my handiwork. This is a um, box, I believe this is for the, uh, the uh, cameras and it has a pressure compensator. So this, make sure that the pressure in here is always about, right now it's set at uh, about five PSI above ambient. So if it's 6,000 PSI outside, this will be 6,005, so that if it gets a crack, the oil comes out and the water doesn't necessarily come in. The control spheres we were talking about are here. These are glass. They're about three quarter inch thick glass. Um, and they're two halves. They're filled with oil. So that were they to crack, uh, it won't have an implosion. Glass has a bad reputation. If you if you have a sphere, a sphere this size that cracks at titanic depth is something like 10 sticks of dynamite. It's a massive amount of energy. And then there's internal systems. There's uh, internally, there's three computers. There's, uh, we have a computer for, uh, we, we have hole monitoring where we, like I mentioned earlier, where we monitor the, listen for sounds of the hole. We have a CO2 scrubber and an oxygen supply. So it's really interesting how the, uh, it's, it's very simple how to monitor and to um, maintain the atmosphere inside the sub. Uh, the way that we get, we basically, all we have to do is we take CO2 out of the air and we put oxygen into the air and then people can survive. And the way that you pull CO2 out of the air is by taking a, a box with this powder, it's called Sotazorb. 
and you blow air onto this powder and it absorbs CO2. And uh, so basically it's just a box, a, a, a plastic box with a fan on top of it. And then for oxygen, we these uh, bottles of oxygen, not air, just oxygen. And it's amazing. A, a bottle of oxygen that's only about maybe two feet by 10 inches cylinder, uh, that's enough air or that's enough oxygen for five people for 10 hours. Wow. So, uh, now we have emergency supply of oxygen that can last five people for up to three days. And we have a, a enough sure. absorber for three days. So if they get stuck down there, we've got a few days to help them uh, uh, in order to get help and to, to bring them to the surface. Fortunately, we didn't have that issue. Good. <laughs> okay, so then there's um, there's batteries, there's circuit breakers, there's power distribution, there's, uh, there's internal Wi-Fi only for the internal, it doesn't go external. Radio signals do not travel through salt water at all. And then we have uh, water detection because there's um, condensation inside the sub and there's there can be some water that can condense on the bottom of the sub. And so what I worked on, uh, all these systems that I just showed in the last screen are right here. This is this goes into that rear dome that doesn't have the window. So this gets pushed into that that, that hemisphere and uh, there are the three computers, there's this uh, power box on the right and there's um, custom circuit boards that I've got to connect it all together. And the wiring for this was very tedious. Good <laughs> Lord. So yeah, this was a lot of, represents a lot of work. And, uh, but uh, it, fortunately I was able to do most of the wiring when it was outside the sub. And then once mm -hmm. we had the sub, we could just slide it in. And that was just, uh, I can't imagine having to assemble this all inside the sub if we had just a hatch. So here's what it looks like when we first tested it on the vessel. And I mentioned earlier about our, our diving platform. This is our diving platform. Okay. The sub sits on the platform. The platform is this uh, hollow, has four hollow air chambers. And so when the platform is on the water, it floats. And then we have these valves. And when we, when we want to dive the sub, we let the air out of those chambers and the whole platform sinks. And so then the sub, when it's underwater, can fly off this platform without any divers being in the water. Oh, neat. And so it's safer for divers. It's uh, um, it's safer because we don't have a we don't have to have a crane, um, and we're able to uh, uh, the sub can be kind of autonomous or in that it can fly off, and when it comes when it wants to come back up, it flies back onto the platform, and then operators raise the platform. Um, we truly value your thoughts and ideas on the matter, so please feel free to share them out. Additionally, we encourage you to subscribe to the channel, and please share the video with your friends. Your support is highly appreciated. Thank you for joining us on this exciting quest.